It's so easy to get rich in my opinion, yet only a few people achieve it. Would you believe me if I tell you that there are more than one million ways out there to make a million US dollars, yet still people are still living from paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. This I believe is because of a lack of knowledge and exposure. And I may not be able to help as much with the exposure, but I'm gonna do every single thing in my power to help with the knowledge. And today, my YouTube family, my rockstar, Stars, it's no different. I will be sharing with you today in this video the secrets that many retailers don't want you my YouTube family to know about how they're making millions of dollars with very little effort and the knowledge that I'll be sharing are 10 steps that you can use to get from zero dollars to one million US dollars in five years or less. If millions are out there to be made, we're going to make it on this channel and we're going to do it together. It's such a pleasure to have you back. I really appreciate you clicking on that play button every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you for the loyalty. To you, my YouTube family, my rock stars, I am grateful. Welcome back to the channel, my YouTube family. And today, we're gonna be sharing secrets. Things that most people don't want you to know. I don't know if it's because they don't believe that everybody should be successful or if we are successful then they have no more control over us but whatever the reason is that people keep things a secret I'm still to find out I'm not interested however because as you know I'm gonna share and overshare so let me start by telling you about something that happened to my son when he was in prep school so when my son was enrolled in prep school, it was, I believe it was career day. And as you know, they're going to go around the room and they're going to ask all the students, what is their ambition? So I anticipate that the scenario went something like this. Every child kept standing up. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an architect. And then my son gets up and says, I want to be a vendor listen the teacher gave it to him good and proper now i understood exactly why my son wanted to be a vendor he saw his mother hustling all his life whether it's buying clothing and reselling or anything for god's sakes that i could get my hand on to make a profit i was in it he also started to hustle at a very young age. I remember when he was going to Cornwall College, children back then weren't as familiar with that liquid polish that you can use to polish your shoe. And what he would do is he would buy it at a store that we would go to and sell it at a profit to the students. And they loved it because no longer did you have to walk around with the can of shoe polish and the sponge. It was just one application, it's liquid and you're good to go. So he he had a niche and he solved a need among his peers, which is really what you need to do to operate a successful hustle. So when my son proudly tells his teacher in prep school that he wants to be a vendor, as a mother, I am proud. But as his teacher, she was appalled. And when my son came home from school that evening, he was a little bit distraught, I could tell. And upon inquiring, I realized that his teacher had gone on to counsel him on the fact that being a vendor is not a lucrative career or it's an indication that he lacks ambition. Now, I don't know if she said it that harshly, but at the end of the day, that's the message she had communicated to my son. And of course, he felt deflated because all this time, his mother is over here cheering him on for whatever profession he chooses to embark on, especially that of a vendor. And I'll tell you why soon. Now, if you think about it, vending is one of the easiest ways to make money. You buy this hairbrush 
for $10, you sell it for $20, your profit is $10. You didn't manufacture it, you didn't source the raw materials for it. All you did was to facilitate an exchange and you're making money. Now, I wasn't angry with his teacher, nor did I blame her for what she had said to him. Quite frankly, I think she was looking out for his best interest, but with very limited perspective. So I figured it would have been a good opportunity for me to go in the following morning when I dropped my son to school and have a brief conversation with her because I wanted to enlighten her darkness. Now, I had a very good relationship with his teacher, so it wasn't a scolding type of conversation it was very respectful and it was a fruitful exchange I asked her I said why are you so opposed to him being a vendor do you know what a vendor is and her response didn't surprise me she actually pointed to the street vendors at the entrance of the school and said it's people who are buying and selling things now this is no fault of hers this is probably what she was taught and what she didn't realize even back then was that the word world's richest people were glorified vendors. Let's assess the top three richest people in the world today. The first is Elon Musk. And yes, he created the Tesla, but then he's selling it. And you may argue with me and say, you know what, Odetta, he's not a vendor because he's an inventor. But if he had invented that car and not sell one unit, he definitely would not be the world richest man. So the primary skill set was his ability to invent something that would solve a need and that people would buy. He is a vendor. Next on the list is Jeff Bezos. He's the biggest, most glorified vendor out there. By creating a platform that facilitates buying and selling of goods and services, you can't want it better than that, my YouTube family. And the third on the list is Bernard Arnold. Now, he's the owner for brands like Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. So again, he's making his millions by selling goods and services to end users or by doing business to business sales. He is a glorified vendor. So that day I used examples to convey to my son's teacher that vending is not because my son lacks ambition. It's because he's looking for the most efficient and effective way to make his millions. Now, like I said, we had a great relationship, so we laughed it off. She was very receptive to what I shared and she made a commitment to correct her perspective. I didn't need her to go back to my son and apologize and all of that because at the end of the day, she's still the teacher and he's still the student. But I just wanted to make sure she was now clear so she would not deter him in the future when he talks about being a vendor. Now, e-commerce is the industry of the century and it's also the industry of the future. And I promise you that it will become the primary way that people buy. Already hundreds and thousands of retail outlets are closing and it is forecasted that 80,000 stores will close by 2026 in the United States. Buying online will replace buying in a brick and mortar store. And that is why the secrets that I'm gonna share today is how to make millions from retail just simply buying and selling people's products. The great thing is you don't need your own e-commerce platforms. There are already established platforms out there, like of course our own Goffa, Amazon, Shopify, eBay, and many others. So that said, here are 10 steps that you can take to become a millionaire in less than five years using retail and selling goods and services online. Now, the first and critical step to make millions buying and selling products is to decide which e-commerce platform you want to sell your products on. Now, like I said, there are many out there, so you have to evaluate the pros and the cons. I'll cover two here specifically today. You know I'm going to have to talk about Goffa. Goffa, 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 
buy it with no I make it in no it's one of the cheapest out there because it's the only platform where you don't spend any money to sell your products and only when a product is sold Goffa takes a portion of it and it's only between 10 and 20 percent of the cost of the product now from that 10 to 20 percent that Goffa takes when your product is sold Goffa actually pays the commission to people who refer your products because it leverages affiliate marketing to get products moving you have this army of people who are taking the link for your products and sending them to their family friends and even complete strangers because they have a vested interest because if someone clicks on that link and buys the product they will earn a commission and the commission actually is shared specifically below every single product on the site so you're not wondering what that commission is to get your products on Goffo, you can watch this video here here that will explain how to enroll as a GPO or a Goffa product owner. You then upload photographs, you upload a description, you upload the price of your products and Goffa will do the rest. We will deliver your products to the customers and we'll also manage the customer service. Now the second platform that I personally use a lot is Amazon and of course it's a lot more popular than Goffa. So I would recommend you put your products on multiple platforms because there's no harm in doing so. The cost to sell your products on Amazon through their FBA program is either 99 cents per unit every time you make a sale or you pay a flat $39.99 and that's their professional program and no matter how many units you sell that's one flat fee. Amazon does use affiliate marketing as well but the commissions are not as great as Goffa. Their commissions range anywhere from 8% to 15% while Goffa goes from 5% to as much as 50% of the value of the product that people will get for recommending and referring it to others. In both cases, Amazon and Goffa, you need to source your product and that's one of the steps that I'm going to tell you exactly where to go to find products dirt cheap and maximize on your margin. So stay tuned. Now the second step is critical and this step will make or break your retail business. This is deciding which product to sell. Now the first thing you have to think about when deciding on a product is that it must solve a need that people have. Let's say for example selling these fans in Iceland during winter. Who in the world is going to buy fans? It does not solve a need, so you will not be able to sell any products. I also like to recommend to people that they should have their product aligned to their brand. That way, it comes naturally to them when they try to market it, and it's easier for them to find a target market. Let me give you an example. If you're a teacher and you're going to start your online or your retail business, why not sell things like stationary to include notebooks, pens, gadgets for schools, backpacks, lunch packs. For two reasons, this makes complete sense. You understand the market. You are working in the market every day so you can target the people there and you're able to speak to the importance of it. So when the products that you're selling aligns well to your brand, you'll find that you'll be more successful. You can also do simple things like like Google top selling retail products and you can determine if anything there stands out and if you believe you can market it successfully where you live. What I like to do is to go on all the different e-commerce sites and just look at their top selling products. Whether it's Amazon, it's eBay, it's Alibaba and that usually gives me an idea of what I can target. As a matter of fact, when you go on Alibaba, you can literally type in the search top selling Amazon products and it will show you some of the products that are selling like hot bread on Amazon. And I'm going to show you exactly how to leverage that platform to maximize your profits. So stay tuned. Another way to determine which product you want to sell is just to look around you. What products are your friends using? What products are your family members using? If you have a lot of friends that are into wig and hair extension, that kind of answers the question. The key is 
ways to differentiate your offering and you can do so in one of two ways either you reduce your price so you have a competitive advantage or your product is so unique that you are the point of contact for people to buy that product you can also differentiate your service in by just offering amazing customer service because believe it or not good customer service is not easy to come by these days now the third step can make or break your business and this is critical it's to source your products now you can either source products from the manufacturer or from a distributor slash supplier it doesn't matter the key is to make sure that they are producing or providing you with good quality products they're doing so in a timely fashion and they're doing so at a competitive price now for me where i go as a one-stop shop to source products is alibaba and yes it has some good reviews and it has some bad reviews but quite frankly my experience has been positive all the way and i'll tell you exactly why that's the case now here's a secret did you know that most of the products that are sold on platforms like amazon shopify or even ebay are purchased from alibaba and to prove it i'm gonna show you a few examples now let's look at this bluetooth speaker as the first example here on alibaba if you buy a thousand units you're getting it for four dollars and 32 per speaker now the exact same bluetooth speaker is selling on amazon as you can see here for anywhere from $18.99 to $22.99 most of the persons who are actually selling products on amazon are buying them dirt cheap on alibaba buying large quantities so that they can optimize the price and then reselling them on amazon at margins that are simply ridiculous now at four dollars and 32 cents per speaker you're gonna need to add the shipping cost to that the taxes and if you incur custom duties you also need to add it so let's say that your end cost from 432 is six dollars and 32 so two dollars will cover all those costs that i just mentioned it simply means that when you sell the speaker on amazon let's say you sell it for the maximum that's shown here of $22.99 your profit is $16.67 per speaker a thousand speakers will make you a profit of 16,670 US dollars and listen you may think a thousand speakers sound a lot but quite frankly it's only 33 speakers per day that you need to sell and you're on Amazon where the entire globe is your marketplace so there's no limit it to what you can do on a platform like that now persons have actually pointed out that on Goffer, this same exact speaker we only sell it for $16.09 versus the $22.99 on Amazon and they're wondering why that's because we're sourcing it cheap we may not be buying a thousand so we're not getting that low ball price of 432 but we are not trying to make a killing with our prices on Goffer. we're marketing it up at a reasonable level and there you go if that doesn't confirm that you can maximize on your profitability on retail by buying low on platforms like Alibaba and selling high I don't know what will now here's another example now this hammock is something that I absolutely love and when you buy 500 units on Alibaba you get it at $79 per hammock now you will realize that as your volume that you your buying increases your prices will fall it's the typical wholesale model and you can leverage that to maximize your profit potential if you can afford and if you can store and if you can find buyers for large numbers it does work 
in your best interest. Now, this same hammock, which is for $79 on Alibaba, is selling for $249.99 on Amazon. Now, let's say you bought it for $79, and by the time you add things like your taxes, your shipping, your custom duties, that's another $50. So it means that your out-of-pocket cost per unit is $129.99. When you sell it for $249, $99, your profit per unit is 120 US dollars. For 500 units, you're making $60,000 in profit. Now, don't for a moment think that this only applies to Bluetooth speakers and hammocks. Absolutely not. It applies to wigs, to hair extensions, to beauty products, to gadgets, to pots and pans. Every single product that you could possibly think of can be purchased somewhere to include Alibaba at a lower price and you can resell it at a higher price and make millions. Now the good thing is that on Alibaba, even though some of the suppliers will have high quantities, like 500 and 1,000, you are usually able to find some that have as little as one or even 10 products. And that way you're not having to expend a significant amount to start your business. Now the fourth step to making millions buying and selling is to make sure that your supplier, like an Alibaba, does not scam you because the probability of that happening is great and it's not because Alibaba is not a reputable platform it is however you have to realize that it's average people like you and I who are using Alibaba to sell their products and they may have criminal intent and try to defraud you by selling products that are subpar or trying to get you to pay more for your products or even your shipping than you have to so this step is critical here's exactly how you go about it and if you follow these steps believe me like me you will never be scammed when you're using a platform like Alibaba and you're looking for let's say for example the same Bluetooth speaker you need to validate that who is selling it is a verified seller and that's usually on the side of the screen that you can check. I, if I remember correctly, it's usually to the right of the screen. You need to avoid buying from sellers that are not verified. You will also, in some instances, have an option to visit the seller's website. Go ahead and click. Look to see things like the little lock sign where the domain name is. Look to see how long they have been selling, if they have other products, and anything that will indicate to you that they are legitimate. On Alibaba, you will also sometimes see how long this company has been either manufacturing products for or selling on Alibaba. For this Bluetooth speaker, for example, it says one year, so I probably would not buy from them. Look for things like on-time delivery. For this particular seller, they're at 98.3%, which means that 9.8 out of 10 times, you're gonna get your products delivered on time, which is good for Alibaba and all the logistics issues that are happening now globally. You should also pay attention to how many transactions they have sold. Now for this particular seller, it's saying that they have revenue of $80,000 plus. That's not a lot. Now it may be because they just started to sell on Alibaba because they may be an established company otherwise. But for me, that is usually a red flag. I need to see that they have several hundred thousands, which means that they they have a lot of experience with an e-commerce platform. So usually you have everything at your fingertips to evaluate if you're gonna get scammed or not. Use it. Don't for a moment forget that if it looks too good to be true, it's possibly a lie. Now we're halfway through the list, my YouTube family. Now step five is one that's typically underestimated and it's packaging. After you have sourced your products, you need to make sure that your products leave a lasting impression on customers. And one way to differentiate your offering in that regard is to package it nicely. Now for those who have purchased my book, 
thank you i'm grateful you will realize that if you buy it from Goffer or from my personal website you will get it packaged in a very nice gift box that quite frankly if you're gifting it to someone you will not have to do anything else but for what i'm getting in terms of feedback and the amount of people who have done videos on social media just unboxing their book it's definitely worth the investment because by doing that you're marketing your brand it's gonna cost a few dollars more for you to do this but packaging your products and branding them properly is something that anyone who is serious about making millions buying and selling products will need to do now the sixth step is to actually buy your products now most of these platforms that you're gonna buy from if you are gonna source it from an Alibaba or any e-commerce platform you'll be able to use major credit or debit cards such as MasterCard Visa or anything like that now it's important to note that some of these websites will actually charge you a fee to process your credit card and it's usually anywhere from two to three and a half percent so don't think that that's a scam it's a part of the process they're basically passing all the costs back to you as the customer or as the business that's buying from them now in buying the products you need to negotiate don't take any price that anyone gives you in any place as the final price always ask for a discount so even if the price is listed on an Alibaba for example and I see for example for this fan that it's five dollars if I buy a thousand I'm gonna have a conversation with the supplier and say listen can I get it for 450 I'm gonna keep coming back for more I want to build up a long-term relationship here this is your way of showing me that you are as invested in this as I am and I never stop until I get a discount and in those unique circumstances where I can't get a discount what I'll do is try to negotiate a discount with the shipping because they can choose from different freight forwarders to get your products to you wherever you are receiving it and I'll talk about that soon in this list so if they are so inclined they can actually find a cheaper freight forwarder or the easiest one which may be more expensive so when I negotiate shipping discounts with them they are forced to go and find the most cost effective person to ship my products with as I've said in other videos always ask for a discount it's an amazing way to keep a few extra dollars in your pocket remember money for spend it no for dash way now after you pay on most of these platforms like alibaba you need to follow up to make sure that they're manufacturing your products if that's required or that they're shipping it on the schedule that you agreed to because sometimes they will actually drag their feet now that point leads into number seven which is getting the product to you now that you have paid for it as I said earlier, you can negotiate shipping with them and force them to have to go with the lowest freight forwarder to get your products to you. It is about 30% cheaper to ship products from places like China directly to Jamaica when compared to the US. So what I'll do is if I need it quickly and it's small quantities, I'll ship it through the US because that's usually faster because obviously there are more ships going from China to the US on a daily basis than there is to our small island Jamaica but if it's a large order and I have time I'm gonna ship directly from China to Jamaica that way I can leverage the lowest shipping cost now when you ship through the US you can easily get a freight forwarder to receive your items on your behalf when you ship products to Jamaica sometimes depending on the product you may have to get a custom broker and that can be pretty pricey and it also can present delays so you have to evaluate your pros and cons now one of the issues I've seen that I must point out when it comes to receiving your goods is that they are not packed properly I've received shipment of goods and 50% of
of the products were damaged. How difficult is it going to be for me to take out those products and ship them all the way back across the next side of the world to China to get back my money or to get them replaced? It's difficult. So what you need to do is to talk to your supplier or the manufacturer and ask them to one, package your products properly and to two, send you a photograph of your packaged products or a video so you can see what they have done. I have found that that's a good way for me to hold them accountable and it has reduced damages significantly for our shipments. Now we're at the exciting time because you have your products in hand and you know your e-commerce platform that you're gonna sell it on, so now it's time to upload it. The first step to getting your products on an e-commerce platform and the most important is the quality of the image and the type of image. You have to realize that when someone is browsing through thousands of products online, the photo is what's going to catch their attention. If yours is pixelated or blurry or you take the product at a bad angle and you don't provide enough angles with additional photographs, you are likely going to lose that sale. What you have to realize is that when you're buying and selling, whether you're doing it online or in a store, how you showcase your product is going to drive whether it sells or not. The good thing about buying on a platform like a Alibaba and reselling is you don't even have to reshoot the photographs. You can go over there and screenshot those photographs and upload them to your platform. Be careful, however, of copyright issues because you may not get away with doing that for every product but for the most part you are able to if not invest in a box a photo box with proper lighting to be able to take high quality photographs of your products because that in itself will get in the way of you making millions of dollars buying and selling products. Now, what I find that many people do is when they're buying their products from Alibaba, instead of receiving the products, looking at it, ensuring that it's not damaged, they go ahead and send it directly to the e-commerce platform where they're gonna sell it. The problem with that is sometimes your products are damaged, sometimes your products are not what you ordered, and now you have to figure out how to get it back from that company to be able to fix that problem. My recommendation is that you receive the products, you do an assessment, and then you send them to the different e-commerce platforms that you're gonna be selling them from. Now, for most e-commerce platforms, when you're getting your products to them, you just need to go online and fill out a form. The same applies to Goffa. And when we receive this form, it confirms what you're sending, who it's coming from, a description of your products. And it's really to keep a paper trail so that in a warehouse with hundreds of thousands of products from different product owners, your items don't get lost. And soon you're wondering, where are my five products? They're still there because that form goes into the the system and it's a measure of accountability. So that's a process that you're going to have to undertake to get your products to any e-commerce platform for reselling. And important to note, the cost to get the products there will be at your expense, not the e-commerce platform. Now the ninth step is pricing your products. If you're coming into the market as a new retailer, I always encourage undercutting the market. Sell at a lower rate to get your customer base up and when it gets to a certain level, at that point you can start incrementally increasing your price to be on par with everyone else. Try to get an idea of what the product that you'll be selling is selling for elsewhere and try not to sell yours for too much or too little. The 10 steps to making millions buying and selling products is marketing. If you have an amazing product that's priced well with great packaging, if you don't tell people about it, then who in the world is gonna buy it? 
Now, of course, you can leverage platforms like Guffa and Amazon and their affiliate programs where people are sharing links and promoting the products on your behalf and driving sales, but that's usually not enough. Social media is an excellent place to market your products. And you know what the amazing thing is? It's pretty inexpensive. You can actually go onto Instagram and right there from the comfort of your home, you can set up a marketing campaign. Just create the content for what you want to share. You go in on Instagram, for example, and you select that you want to start an ad. You pick your audience, you pick your budget, you pick how long you want it to run for, and it charges your credit or debit card right there, and your promotion starts. For me, this has been a very effective means of promoting products, and it's also inexpensive, so it's efficient. Now, we've come to the end of another long video. Thanks for your patience. I appreciate it. It. And if you're still here, I would appreciate it if you would write something in the comments for me. In the same way I said you have to believe in your product, I want you to write in the comments that I believe in myself. You have the potential to go from zero dollars to one million dollars, but the only way to do that is with self-belief. Thank you for watching, my rock stars, my YouTube family. Until next time, walk good.